We we'll begin tonight with President Muhammad Buhari's call for consistent and an all-inclusive global strategy to tackle the scourge of tuberculosis globally. President Buhari, who expressed commitment to ending the disease in Nigeria, is of the view that the new strategy must be based on research and discovery of new drugs. He was speaking at the high-level meeting on the fight against tuberculosis at the United Nations General Assembly in New York. Our correspondent Ibrahim Adra reports. It's the first ever high-level meeting that United Nations General Assembly is holding on the fight against tuberculosis. Participating are key stakeholders and world leaders, amongst them Nigeria's Muhammad Buhari. Together, they hope to accelerate efforts in ending TB and reaching all affected people with prevention and care. Commander in Chief of the Armed Force of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. President Buhari believes tackling the menace of TB requires consistent and all-inclusive global strategy based on research and discovery of new drugs. The task before us, therefore, is to initiate a global response towards eradicating the disease globally in developing countries. Counter countermeasures are sometimes beyond the capacity of such nations. In addition, there is the need to develop new strategies that connect national responses with international finance and technological partnership to stop the ravaging disease. The Nigerian leader is happy with the adoption of a political declaration that commits to provide diagnosis and treatment to 40 million people, including 3.5 million children between 2018 and 2022. The declaration should also serve as a template for preventing TB for those most at risk through refuge scale up of access to testing the infection, especially for the high burden countries. He adds that his government's strategic plan is to provide Nigerians with universal access to high quality, patient centered prevention, as well as diagnosis and treatment services for tuberculosis, TB, HIV, and drug resistant TB by 2020. Tuberculosis is a leading killer that killed 300,000 people with HIV and 1.3 million others in 2017, according to the United Nations data. The green statistics is what this political declaration seeks to reverse as quickly as possible. From New York, Ibrahim Adra, Channels Television News. The meeting between the federal government and trade union officials on the new minimum wage ended in a deadlock, with the Nigeria Labour Congress insisting on its planned strike. The meeting, which had in attendance the Minister of Labour and Productivity, Dr. Chris Ngige, the NLC President, Ayuba Waba, and members of the Tripartite Committee lasted for about an hour. The NLC is accusing the federal government of refusing to reconvene the Tripartite Committee on the new minimum wage to conclude its work. Our correspondent, Terry Kumi, reports. <laughs> With the Nigeria Labour Congress's decision to embark on an indefinite strike starting midnight the 26th of September 2018, an emergency meeting between the NLC and the federal government was called, but ended in a deadlock, despite the Minister of Labour's promise that the tripartite committee would reconvene in the next one week. We normally use uh, uh, two days for the meeting, so we are reconvening the meeting on the 4th. And all the processes have been put in place. The Labour leaders know and they are now expected to communicate them to their organs. NLC is demanding a new minimum wage of 56,000 Naira and says its decision to embark on the strike is because the federal government has failed to reconvene the tripartite committee on the new national minimum wage which it adjourned indefinitely. This is the first meeting we are having any information about what we have demanded for. Uh, also updating us on uh, what uh, they have been doing behind the scene. And uh, from that discussion, uh, clearly because you are aware we are here in a representative capacity because the meeting also had to come up uh, in an emergency situation. We are taking back this information to brief our rank and file about uh, what the issues are. But our minimum demand is that uh, the meeting 
of the tripartite committee should be reconvened uh, without any delay to complete this assignment. And until that is made, uh, the position we have taken remains the same. Earlier in the year, at the celebration of the NLC at 40, the Minister of Labour promised that a new minimum wage would be announced in the third quarter of the year, which by all calculations ends on the 30th of September 2018. Uh, this committee, of which I'm the Deputy Chairman, and of which the NSC President and the Labour Centres have about nine representatives, have put up a, 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 a timetable. And we do expect that by the third quarter of the year, a no minimum wage will be announced for the country. The NLC is not only faulting the federal government on that announcement, but also expressed concern that some states have insisted that they cannot pay the proposed new minimum wage of 56,000 Naira. It remains to see how long the strike would last, how much compliance it will enjoy, and just how swiftly the federal government would respond to end it. Terry Ikumi, Channels Television News. Now to politics. The governorship candidate of the Social Democratic Party SDP in Ocean State, Senator Iolao Mishere, is set to form alliance with the All Progressives Congress, the APC. Senator Mishere, who confirmed his decision to journalists in Ilefe, says that his party agreed to the alliance with the APC after the conditions he gave were, ex were accepted. According to Mr. Omishere, any party that is ready to go along with the SDP core values would receive his attention. This announcement is coming after leaders of the All Progressives Congress, the APC, met with the SDP governorship candidate ahead of Saturday's governorship rerun. The PDP and the APC parties have approached us for a coalition based on the performance and our grassroots appeal and networks, especially in the seven units, earmarked for the wrong. Our core values and philosophy, as indicated in our manifesto, that is, the social agenda, have all been presented to, to the APC and PDP representatives who have approached us for support and formation of the coalition government. For the social agenda to be effectively implemented, the SDP will ensure that our core values are considered and the comprehensive development agenda of the party of choice for a meaningful coalition. In this regard, we gave our position to the SDP led by the Senate President, Senator Bukala, Bukala, Bukala Sharaki, and the upper delegation of EPC led by the National Chairman, Comrade Adams Osiomole. Asked by the governors of Kano, Jigawa, Oyo Ogun, and the government elect of uh, Ikiti State. The APC has come back to us, accepted all our conditions, proposed to them to form a coalition government on the, on the good governance structure we give to them, while the PDP as a party are yet to go back to us, are yet to respond. We have therefore, as a, PD, as, as a party, SDP, accepted to support APC for victory in the Iran election tomorrow and have to form a coalition government with APC in the United future. In the meantime, the national chairman of the Social Democratic Party, Chief Ulu Fale, has reacted to Senator Mishari's mobilization call of SDP faithfuls for the All Progressive Congress ahead of tomorrow's Oshun State governorship rerun. The 1999 presidential candidate on the platform of the Joint Alliance for Democracy and the All People's Party in a phone conversation with Channels Television distanced himself from Omishore's pronouncement asking supporters of the SDP to vote for the APC candidate. Take a listen. All I want to say is that uh, as, as national chairman, I was not consulted and therefore, I'm not a party to a decision. That is all I intend to say. Not a word more. In the meantime, the candidate of the People's Democratic Party in the Oshun State Governorship election, Senator Ademola Deleke, has raised an alarm over alleged threats to his life in the run-up to the Thursday supplementary poll. In a letter 
to diplomatic missions around Nigeria. Senator Adeleke mentioned what he described as infractions in the last Saturday polls. The refusal of INEC to declare him the winner, the alleged killing and maiming of his supporters, and the arrest of key PDP leaders on trumped up on trumped up charges. He then called on the international community to prevail on President Muhammad Buhari to allow votes to count by restoring his mandate, adding, We count on you to mount pressure on the ruling party to restore people's mandate in Ocean State. And ahead of the supplementary Oshun governorship polls, the Independent National Electoral Commission, INEC, has distributed both sensitive and non-sensitive electoral materials to the four local government areas where the elections will take place. The exercise is built to hold on Thursday, September the 27th, in seven polling units across the four local council areas. Ocean State Resident Electoral Commissioner, Olu Shegu Abaje, told journalists in Oshobo that the movement of the vehicles conveying the materials will be monitored to prevent diversion. A total of 3,498 votes are expected to be, uh, voters rather, are expected to participate in the elections in seven polling units of the four local government areas. And staying with the Oshun politics, the British High Commission in Nigeria says that it is working in collaboration with the United States and the European Union to ensure a successful completion of the governorship rerun in Oshun State tomorrow. The British High Commissioner to Nigeria, Mr. Paul Arkwright, wants INEC security agencies as well as participating political parties to ensure the rerun takes place in an atmosphere devoid of violence, intimidation and vote buying. Mr. Arkwright was a guest on our breakfast program, Sunrise Daily. We are sending some people back down to Ocean State, obviously a smaller number, it's a very small number of polling units, but we will be, the UK uh, mission, will, the High Commission will be represented there, I understand the US are sending people down there, the EU are sending people down there, so there will be international observers uh, at the polling units tomorrow. I think that's a very important part of that. Um, I would also draw your attention to a statement which was issued by the US uh, Embassy yesterday on behalf of uh, the British, the US and the uh, EU delegations um, talking about, well, commending the people of Ocean State for voting in what we consider to be uh, a free, fair and credible election, um, calling on peaceful reruns uh, tomorrow in the seven polling units concerned, um, and really saying vote buying, voter, voter inducement, intimidation um, must not happen uh, or tomorrow. So uh, a call, a public appeal if you like, commending uh, what happened in, in Oshun uh, at the weekend, but also saying we are, we are going to continue to observe and we do appeal to uh, everybody concerned, whether that's INEC, the political parties, or of course the voters themselves, uh, to ensure that these reruns go smoothly without intimidation, without violence, uh, and without vote buying. The British High Commissioner to Nigeria, Mr. Paul Ockride. In part two after the break, we continue our assessment of Nigeria's journey since attaining independence on October the 1st, 1960, with focus tonight on the legislature. Please stay with us. <laughs> 